Hoping to budget your food expenses this holiday season? Get more bang for your bite with America's Best Value Meal Kit. Every plate is 50% cheaper than your average fast casual meal and ready in just six simple steps. Get started with $1.49 per meal with code 49JunkyardPod at everyplate.com slash podcast. Yay, networks. And I think if you listen to your hearts, you will find that my wife is a monster. But I don't think it makes me the a-hole. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Junkyard Mayhem. This is going to be our best episode yet. Do you want to know why? I'm going to hand the reins over to Hannah. Yep. I have not one inkling of an idea what this episode is about. Yep. Shane was whining. What are we going to do for our podcast this week? What should we do? And I said, you know what, Shane? I already have my ideas. I'm all set. I was, and I'll see you when we record. I was putting out fires in our life. In a million different directions. Oh, well, that makes while, it sound like you were busy doing other stuff and I was... Well, Hannah lays in the backyard. <laughs> uh, no, but Hannah prepared our episode this week and I'm really excited because I don't know what we're doing. Okay. The first the first section of this... Yes. Okay. Is a new game that I have invented. A new game. A new game. Okay. Then the second part is going to be... And am I the a-hole? But it's a special edition because we know the people involved in this story. Oh, my God. Okay, it's a real-life example. You came prepared. I did. And then the third segment is going to be Hypothetical Freaks, which we haven't done for a long time, <laughs> about an award show that we are attending oh, this week. Oh, we have to attend an award show. I know. We're excited to. We're also terrified. Yeah, both. Hypothet- both emotions. Hypothetical <laughs> Freaks will be very fun to play for that. Mm-hmm. All right. Should we begin with my new game? Yeah, I'm a little bit nervous. Okay, so I did invent this like iteration of it, but I got the idea. Does this make fun of me? No. Or, or put me down? No. You're just going to be guessing something. Like, I'm oh, going to give you things. I'm going to guess it. So I was, I was listening to an episode of Maintenance Phase, my favorite podcast, aside from ours. Uh, excuse me? No, it's way better than ours. Let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> and uh, Almost every podcast is better than ours. <laughs> And at the beginning of the episode, completely unrelated to what they were talking about, Aubrey was playing a game where she was having Michael guess, is this a gay bar or a steakhouse? And the and she based on like, what? Like what the title, mean? like the name of the oh, restaurant. Oh, she would read a name. She would she yeah, it would be like, you know, Twin Flames and he would have to guess if it was a gay bar or a steakhouse and it was so funny. <laughs> and I was thinking like, "Oh, we could do something like that." And my uh, idea, which I think is brilliant, is caregiver company or funeral home. <laughs> and I have some oh my really God. good... <laughs> just, just the fact that you found any... I found a lot. ...examples of hard guesses. We can play this game many, many times. And this is just in like the surrounding LA area. So you're going to read me a name of yep. a business. Yes. And I have to guess, is it a caregiver agency? Yes. Or a funeral <laughs> home? Yes. <laughs> the and- fact that there is any ambiguity or overlap <laughs> oh, is hilarious. Just you wait, my <laughs> little angel. Um, is that one of them? <laughs> it's close. Uh, th- the names, it'll be like, you know, McCormick's Funeral Home. I will leave out the funeral home. If it right. was like McCormick's Funeral ho- funeral uh, Home or McCormick's Caregiver Company, I'm not going to say what it is. It'll give me the, be, no, give me the whole name. I will. Just, I just want people to be like, wait, why is it called, you know, yeah. my little angel it's my little angel funeral home. Right, right. Thing. Okay. That would be a disturbing name for a funeral <laughs> home. <laughs> That's just my example. Okay. Are you ready to play? Yeah. I, yeah, I'm ready. You're ready? Do I have a prize okay. if I win? Here we go. Number one, Great Mercy. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> this is, okay. So, like, Great Mercy, if it were a caregiver agency, that feels kind of offensive. <laughs> <laughs> but great mercy of like the end of the life is also it's kind of negative. not exactly the tone I want from my uh, I'm gonna just funeral home and now I'll read you the full name okay okay great mercy in home caregiver uh-huh. <laughs> wrong <laughs> okay <clears throat> that's because my existence and your existence is brutal and mm-hmm. tragic. Yes. And they are providing us with great mercy yes. by coming in and helping me brush my teeth. Yes. 
<clears throat> okay, you ready? Um, yes, that was amazing. First, number two, always there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's a Terry Diver <laughs> agency. Maybe it's a funeral home that specializes in like never leave <laughs> like uh, her mission that you bring home the ashes with you, oh, like always so there. they're always there. True, could be either one. My parents kept ashes of one of our cats that mm -hmm. passed away and he sat on our shelf Aww. he was always there so, what's your <laughs> always guess? There, it has to be a caregiver caregiver company yeah always there funeral and cremation services no <laughs> in burbank <laughs> no <laughs> you are yeah. zero for two this is harder than i thought oh i know always there that should probably be renamed Never there. Yeah. If it's okay. Never there. It's gonna be some dark humor here, guys. If you haven't picked up on that yet, yeah. this segment's a little bit of a. <laughs> I have a good one next. Okay, number three. This is one word. Okay. When if you heard me in the other room laughing to myself, it was at this name. Okay. Okay. One word. Empathy hands. <laughs> if you didn't hear that, empathy hands. That one word. It's so weird. <laughs> Because that's what you and me tell it when you're giving me a shower. <laughs> Hannah, I need the empathy hands. <laughs> oh, man. But, like, okay. Caregivers and funeral home directors. Need, oh, they specialize in empathy. They need to be empathetic yes. people. Yes. They need to create an environment that's of what empathy. You want in uh, situations. Empathy hands. One word. Um, <laughs> caregiver, empathy hands, home care, LLC. Yes, I got, got it. One. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> All right, I have a huge list here. Should we just do? Like, Let's do a few more, and then more? maybe we'll do it again. Oh, this is really fun. Yeah, I should have checked off the ones I did. I'm starting to not remember. Okay, number four, all caring. All ca okay, caring is in the name. So, like, that makes me feel like it's probably a caregiver agency. All Terran, though. Ugh. What? Like, A L L. All, yes, all, all caring. caring. Like, all caring. But, like, you're all caring about someone's grief that they're going to do at yeah. a funeral home. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go for the non obvious, the funeral home. All caring cremations. Yeah. You got it. <laughs> Okay, here's here's a tricky one. A and B quality. <laughs> a and B? <laughs> I assume it's like the owner's name. I want the A quality, no matter a what. A and B quality. <laughs> I don't want your B quality service. <laughs> um, A and B. Terry Diver, I don't have any information. A and B quality home care. Nice. Good job. Nice. Okay. You know what, A and B? Your name doesn't really... <laughs> Like to know what you do, so I would suggest. Well, you got quality home care in there. I would suggest empathy hands people. <laughs> one word, empathy hands people carry giving. One word, that might be good. Okay, here's one: a graceful way. <laughs> a graceful way to the grave, funeral home, lock it in, <laughs> boom done. <laughs> funeral home. Yeah. A graceful way in home care. <laughs> no. I'm really bad at this. This is hard. It's really hard. It's mm -hmm. really hard. Next time we'll have to play where you find them and I have to Yeah, them. I'll present them to you. <laughs> okay. Those are all in LA. Yes, these are all these are all in like a small area of LA. I just went on the map and looked in like a three mile radius. Okay. Okay. Here's my personal favorite one. So I'm messaging you about how we take care of Dead bodies and disabled people seem to be pretty similar in terms of na like business yes, names. Indeed. We need to look into that. That's not right, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone look into that. Okay. <clears throat> home instead. <laughs> okay, home instead sounds like a straight up caregiver agency. Like you hire caregivers. So you can remain in your home and not need to go yes. into a hospital or something like that. And what would it mean if it was a funeral home? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a funeral home that, again, specializes in, like, 
sending things home. Sending home ashes yeah. or at home funerals. Oh, yeah. Is that are you allowed to do that? I don't know. Like can you bury someone in your backyard? No, you cannot bury a body in your backyard. If you go through at home funeral services, you can. So what's your guess? Shane? I don't know. Uh Terry Devin. Yes, home instead. Uh, it's that's a home full instead. name. Uh-huh. Home instead is the full name. It's just in Winnetka, if anyone's wondering. Oh. Okay, we're we're getting long here. I have so many more. This is going to be. I think we should start every single episode. We with play this all day. Home or caregiver agency. We should branch out to like caregiver agency or like vacuum cleaner yeah, repair. It could be you know, anything. see if we can get like even more overlap. Uh huh. That's a great idea, Shane. You can do that for your episode that you That'll be planned. my day next week. <laughs> All right. Vacuum repair or burger bar? Fun. Uh, we will take a break, and then we're going to be right back to do Am I the A-Hole with a personal, personal story. I don't know. Okay. I'm really ready for I'll this. be right back. For our third wedding anniversary this year, Shane and I got one of our favorite wedding photos painted by Paint Your Life. Oh, I'm looking at it right now. I know. And I am still so obsessed with it. I've been staring at it all week. It's beautiful. I can't get enough of it. Paint Your Life transforms your photos into one-of-a-kind, beautiful hand-painted portraits by professional artists at an affordable price. And you even can get a video of your artist doing your painting. Yeah. So you can watch them paint it. And know that it's like a real actual artist that's making it for you. Yeah, so cool. You can order a custom-made hand-painted portrait in less than five minutes and have it delivered in less than two weeks. The whole process is really fast. One of my favorite things about this painting is how it captures like the peaceful elegance of the venue. Yeah. Like behind us is so beautiful. And they even nailed the background. Like, Yeah. yeah, they obviously nailed our faces, but like the background is so reminiscent of yeah, our it's, wedding. it's exactly what it looked uh-huh. like and we loved that spot of our venue so it's really nice to have that you know in in painting form. yeah we have lots of print art in our house and that's fine but having a original painting with like you can see and feel the brush strokes yeah it's so oh it makes me really happy yeah it feels like real art you know mm-hmm This holiday season, you can give the most meaningful gift you have ever given from paintyourlife.com. And there's no risk. If you don't love the final painting, your money is refunded, guaranteed. And right now, as a limited time offer, get 20% off your painting. That's right, 20% off and free shipping. To get this special offer, text the word junkyard to 87204. That's junkyard to 87204. Again, text junkyard to 87204. Paint your life. Celebrate the moments that matter most. Message and data rates may apply. See terms for details. All right, we're back. Are you ready, Shane? Yeah, I think. You don't even know what's coming. I don't know. What is this? My sweet, sweet boy. You have no idea. You've since we've begun called me your sweet angel (laughs) and your sweet, sweet boy. That was an example for the game. And now I'm being like, oh, my sweet little, you know innocent you have no idea i don't know today's just... game of am i the a-hole uh-huh. is going to be evaluating my husband oh shane uh, I should something have, i should have seen that coming. something recently happened uh-huh. a fight a fight you might say what fight are you and i would like to know how many of you are on my side is it the one about me saying you shouldn't eat your toenails <laughs> Okay, that was funny. That was a good one. Thank you. That was a good one. This is a fight <clears throat> about our new couch. Oh, oh. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do Oh, you're here. confident in yourself? I, I feel like I have a story to share. I have I have my side okay, of Okay, well, it. I'm going to be telling the story. I'm I wish gonna... I, I should have written it out. Like an Am I the A-hole post on Reddit? <laughs> yeah. Where it was like, my husband, 31, male, you know? Uh, okay. So, Shane has a favorite snack that a restaurant in Minneapolis, actually in Edina, serves. And it is these... Mr. Paul's Supper Club. Mr. Paul's Supper Club serves these oil-soaked saltine crackers with a flavor, like a a seasoning yeah, yeah. on top. They're amazing. They're They're so yeah. Mr. Paul's Supper Club, please, if you can find a way to allow me to have those saltines, any day, any okay. hour of any day. Like if they would sell them by the box. By the box or just deliver them to me. Yeah. 
I'm in LA right now, but oh. if you can find a way to get well, those saltines the thing is, into my mouth. Shane found when we were in Wisconsin a like they, they were selling bags of like the same saltines and they were not as good because it's bagged. Like you can't get the same yeah. the same level of oiliness that Mr. Paul's Supper Club delivers. And the flavor. And the flavor. But it was they were really good crackers. And they also sold just the powder that you put on them with like the recipe. So we bought that and we were excited. And that was like six weeks ago. And then last week we saw it in our cupboard. We transported it to LA. Yeah, we road tripped out here with our <laughs> spice With mix. our powder mix, yeah. And Shane was like, you know what? Instead of saltines, I'm going to buy Chex, like Chex mix, just the Chex, the cereal. The, and yeah, I'm rice gonna make, yeah. yeah, rice Chex because that's my favorite part of Chex mix. They're easy to eat. And I'm going to make this oil dip, you know, whatever with the Chex. Yeah, brilliant. Brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. Really good. So am I the asshole? No. <laughs> End of story. No. Done. This is <laughs> setting the scene. So we make this and we followed the recipe, but I think we shouldn't have because saltines are more absorbent than rice checks. Yeah. So we poured a cup and a half of canola oil a cup in and a half. to this gigantic metal mixing bowl with yeah. the box of cereal and the powder mix. And it was really good. It was but delicious. There was about... Three, four inches of oil sitting in the bottom of the <laughs> bowl. The bottom was a bit soupy. It was soupy. We did not nail our oil ratio. No, we didn't. But it was our first attempt. It's fine. Um, but they were really good. And we let them like sit overnight. They marinated. They're mm. amazing. They didn't get soggy. I know you're thinking they're soggy. They didn't. Just Mr. Paul's, I just want to say they were not even close to what you create. Yeah. Uh, they were good. They were good. But I don't want you to forget about my, my request. No request. To send me your saltines. Okay. So Shane wants this as his nighttime snack. Okay. My 31-year-old husband is like, that's gonna be my night night snacky. I'm excited. You are you're you're already okay, being okay. untruthful. I'll reel At it no in. point in the evening did I say, I'm ready for my night night snacky. I probably said, Hey, do you want to have some of those checks? And you were like, Yeah, those were dead. Let's eat them. No, it was not equal. I said, Shane, you were like, Will, can I skewer them? You tried to skewer them and the skewer hole was too small. Then I yeah. was like, it's fine. I'll just give them to you with oh, my hands. Oh, yeah. Right. And then I remembered I, I said, baby, baby, you need to the day because you need to snacky. You need to snack, baby. That's how I speak. Shane, Shane, so. Shane, do you think you're getting a little, your emotions are getting a little elevated now? I'm just saying, if you're going to misrepresent, <laughs> The situation, I didn't make fun of you. It for was it. your snack. Do yes, you agree? 100%. Okay. The way you said it and is I that you were like, like, hey, you want some crackers? And I was like, yeah, I'll eat them. No, you were like, I would like crackers. How can I get them in my mouth? And I said, I will feed them to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting on the couch. Shane is sitting next to me like this, but he's raised up, which is your first problem. You should have lowered down, but he's raised up. You're not being objective. There's no You're way not letting them decide. You have to just tell. You can't be like that. And this is when you're an asshole. And this is a problem. Okay. What what we decided to do was to bring the mixing bowl from the kitchen, put it on the arm of the couch, and then I gave Shane bites from there. And they were delicious. Completely idiotic. Two adults should have thought, you know what? Why don't we put some snack in a smaller, more manageable bowl mm -hmm. instead of bringing the gigantic mixing bowl and putting it on the arm of our couch very precariously. I agree. Yeah. But neither of us were like, this is a problem. If anyone knows what foreshadowing is, you might be able to figure out where this well, is Well, the going. next thing that happened is that on one of Shane's final bites, after like an hour, I... Of both of us eating them. Yes. I had some, yes. for sure. So the hour comment there was a dig. I'm, no, that it was wasn't. unnecessary. It wasn't a dig. It felt like... I was saying was... that we were successful for a long time. It yes. wasn't like the first bite I knocked it over. Hannah dirged yourself on <laughs> this dish for <laughs> an hour, and then we were finished. Okay. Go ahead. God. Just make you sure. You cannot. So then on the final bite, what was to be Shane's <laughs> final bite, wasn't, it wasn't planned to be Shane's final bite, but it ended up being... As I brought my hand back, it knocked into the bowl, mm -hmm. spilling it all onto my lap. Yeah. See how she's describing it so passively? The hand. <laughs> the yeah. hand, I not, my hand. Not the bowl. I said my hand. Okay. My Go ahead. Hand. Keep going. From your mouth. Okay? From your mouth. Yes. My hand. Yes. Not really entirely my problem. I was given one final bite after an hour of sitting there watching Hannah just 
devour my they snack. Don't, people, some people aren't going to know if you're kidding. That was a joke. You're leading them astray. We ate them equally throughout no, the hour. No, you ate more. You ate more. Okay. I knock the bowl onto my lap. Yes. I'm freaking out. Oil obviously is everywhere. It's I'm, a leather couch. It's, we're not even at the couch yet. It's on my lap. My favorite shorts that I'm wearing. Love my sweat shorts. I'm trying to get these back in the bowl, the ones that are on top. I don't want to put, like, I still want the checks. Like, yeah. I don't want to ruin it. Oh, I was worried about the checks. So then I'm throwing anything. the checks onto the ground that are, like, hair covered. Like, you know, the ones that are touching something. His hair, hand is left, is covered in hair. <laughs> I'm just not going to put them back in the bowl if they're dirty. So I'm, like, throwing them on the ground, trying to avoid our brand new rug also. Like, everything in here is new. Yeah. So I get them off my lap. I stand up and I realize that a bunch of oil, like, you know, some checks has fallen behind my lap onto the couch, like underneath me. Yeah. And I look and there's like a big splatter. Spla yeah. Splotches of grease stains on the couch cushion and on like the bolster pillow that goes with it. Can I just say what I've been doing this whole time? Because this is part of the story. I've been silent. Yes. I am staring at the situation. Yep. Just quiet. Silent. We'll get to that. It's probably been like 45 seconds by now that I, when I stand up. So then I, I, Chloe also at this time is trying to eat the checks that are like all over the floor and I don't want her to have that much oil. So I'm like, Chloe, wait, like wait over there. And she listens to wait. So I'm like, yeah, I'm just saying wait again and again, because sometimes if you don't repeat it, she'll be like, it must be over now. <laughs> so she's waiting and waiting and waiting. And I'm like trying to pick as much up as possible. And then I finally get all of them like into a, you know, into my pile. And I'm like, okay, Chloe, like you're fine. So she's like licking the remnants off the rug. Well, now she's I, walking around the room because I know. you're saying your name too much. Yeah. I'll say the dog from now on. So at this point, I run into the kitchen. I No, actually, at this point, I, gra I grabbed my phone. And I'm like, I'm saying expletives at this point. I'm freaking out. I grab my phone. I'm Googling how to get oil out of a leather couch. And uh, I, I see that like you're supposed to use baby powder or like something that'll bring it out, but we don't have that. So uh -huh. the, one of the things said Dawn dish soap. So I run into the kitchen. I grab the dish soap. I'm like scrubbing the couch trying to get it. I think around this point is when I probably said something and I, I don't remember exactly what was said, but I probably said something like, it'll be okay. Like, just like, don't worry. Like, it's fine. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. The specifics are murky at this point, but Shane is, is silent so far. Like up until whenever yeah. he starts speaking, it has now been Some six, time. six minutes maybe, you know, of like cleaning and getting this all set. Uh -huh. And as I'm scrubbing the couch, it's not looking better. Like it's looking worse because I'm rubbing soap into the couch and I'm like, oh my God, I think I'm making it worse. Like this looks horrible. I'm almost in tears about like our poor sofa and how now it's all stained and it's so visible and all this. And that is when Shane, but at a certain point I said to you that I felt like the only adult in the house. And I think it that was, was before you spoke. Well, I think it was when, okay, so like, I can't remember the timeline, but I ended up saying like, it's not a big deal. Yeah. Like, it, we'll put a pillow over it. We'll put a blanket over it. No one will notice. Things like that. Just like, make, like, trying to make you not be upset. Why? Essentially. Yeah. Right? So that happened... I don't think that was before, though. At some point, though. Yeah, but Shane, so Shane being silent for this entire thing really irritated me. And as each minute passed, I'm like glancing at him, waiting for him to react to the chaos and the situation and like the couch being damaged and mm -hmm. just like any of it. I'm like, yeah. why is he sitting here completely silent while I'm like running around trying to fix the situation? So at a certain point, I say to him, you know what? I Right now, I feel like I'm the only adult in this house. Yeah. And you're just like staring at me while I am dealing with a catastrophe. You definitely said that after I began saying. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. I was like, that made you even matter that I was like not upset yes, yeah. about what happened. Yeah. So then Shane is like, I just don't. It's not a big deal. Like, it's fine. We'll just put a pillow over it. And I was like, are you serious? Because it's a couch. That's like the most expensive piece of furniture in a house. Like. Mm -hmm. It's a couch. It's a big deal. And that was when he was like, well, maybe we can turn the cushions around. And I was like, the cushions aren't reversible. Like, I actually know that about our couch and they're <laughs> she, not reversible. She's so mad. I was, yeah. And you were like, well, you know what? I just don't think it's a big deal. 
So, okay, do you, is that the end? Yeah, do you have anything else so to add? So, we're just, uh, sort of. Okay. I was trying to be a calming presence for Hannah, and I explained this, we ended up fighting and, like, getting mad at each other. Oh, yes. But I, my reasoning was that <laughs> if I had knocked the bowl over, if, like, if that had been my hand, and I was freaking out, oh, no, I spilled this, like, it's a dinner room on the couch. And Hannah had reacted angrily or flusteredly or, like, freaking out, like, oh, no, oh, no. That would have made me feel really bad about having not the bowl over. And so, I, and hold I, on, hold on. I, 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 I had two responses okay, to okay, that when yeah. we were having our, our fight. You said yeah. that in the fight. I had two responses. One... I didn't view it as entirely my fault just because you can't move your arms. And I didn't think that way. Occasionally, you would knock things over if you moved. But instead, I have to feed you the chips. And therefore, it's not entirely my fault that your chip hand yeah, that's fair. knocked over a bowl that's every fair. once in a while. I'd never knock things over because I don't Exactly. So I was like, well, no, this is equally your fault. It was your bite. And then two, I had said I didn't want you to be screaming like, oh, no, oh, no. What I said to you in the moment was, why didn't you say like, let me Google what to get, how to get stains out of a couch? Like, yeah. I feel like people are going to be like, well, what could Shane have done? Yeah. A, emotional support. B, look I, things up. Like I, I Googled th <laughs> Silence is not emotional support. In some instances it can be. I don't know if my voice didn't have anything. Listen to stuff up. Yeah. Should have done that. I just wanted you to care. I wanted you to be like. And that's my third. Oh, no, let that, me help. That's my third point. Was that like, even though I was consciously like trying to be calming for you mm -hmm. and like make it not a big deal so that you didn't feel bad, I genuinely just was like, well, we'll put a pillow over it and hopefully like it's not a horrible state that ruins our lives. Like, I have so rude. Our couch has bolster pillows. That go right where the stain was. You still see the stain. I thought, and my thinking in that moment was, we'll just put the bolster over the pillow, and yeah, if someone one day lifts it up and sees these little splotches, they might be like, oh, dirty couch, and they might disown us. Okay, we're getting but, way too long. <laughs> so let's wrap this up. That was our story. <laughs> but how do we determine? Oh, well, we it's have not to for, determine. Oh, I mean, I know where I stand. Both of us know where we stand. <laughs> You were the a-hole. I admit, I do admit, I should have been more helpful. Mm -hmm. I will also say I've been accused of trying to be helpful in moments where all you want is someone to listen and be quiet. Do you have a anything? When do I want you? Well, that's what I'm venting to you. Yeah, but I try to solve and yeah. Was, so I was just. But like, it was a real. I was googling things. Yeah. It wasn't a situation where I was like, Shane, I don't need <laughs> nothing. Here is a practical problem. This is an emotional problem. It was a physical problem. I was like, What do we do about the couch? And then you were just like. And I. It wasn't like you were giving me little smiles and nods of encouragement. You were literally zoning if you, out. <laughs> if you'd been wiping the couch and I was like. Oh, smiling. You weren't even looking. Smiling you at you. were literally dozing off. Oh, That's now I'm thing. dozing off? Yeah. We have an unreliable narrator. <laughs> and I think the verdict is clear, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. <sighs> if I am guilty of anything, it is apathy. Yeah. About That's what you're guilty of. A few little splotches on a couch. I am guilty of that. Does that make me a hard and true asshole i don't think so and i think if you look into your hearts you will find that my wife is a monster but i don't think it makes me the a-hole <laughs> to want a little support for my no husband one, and to feel like i'm not the only adult in the house when catastrophes arise no one is i don't you, think no one's calling you the a-hole well, we're, de we're debating here who is the a-hole and it sure it can be me. it can be no one well it could be no one but in this case there's a very clear a-hole uh, <laughs> should we move on to section to whatever part three? I did wish to take a straight break, but <laughs> I'm a little bit afraid to. Oh yeah! Once I, the camera turns off, I might get angry. Just please regard me with empathy hands, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. <laughs>
And we are back. Two a holes. Yeah. <laughs> ready to perform for you. Uh, we are now going to play Hypothetical Freaks. Yep. A game that Hannah and I have long played in our relationship. Yes. When we have an upcoming anxiety inducing event, we make up hypothetical, ridiculous scenarios that could play out uh, that would be so ridiculous that like they'll never actually happen. Things that we could do to make people uncomfortable is generally the... Yeah, just as a way of like lightening the spirit yeah. around whatever we're anxious about. And it can't be as bad as what we come up with. So yeah. once we're there, it'll be fine. This is going to be about the award show that we're attending. We were invited to be guests <sighs> at an LA legit award show with like a giant theater and a red carpet and celebrities. And that's scary. Yeah. We're honored to be yelling. However, yep. Terrifying. Terrified. Like we're gonna have to interact with no like celebrity I hope people. Not. We might. I hope we just talk to each other. I have my first oh. hypothetical freak. Go ahead. Let's say we meet someone really famous. Uh -huh. Like I Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt will not be there. No, he will not be there. If Brad Pitt were there, I would go up to him and pretend like I know him from somewhere <laughs> and like wrap my brain <laughs> and be like, wait, you never worked at like a CVS, <laughs> did you? In Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Where did I recognize? Wait, Uncle, <laughs> Uncle Jimbo? No. <laughs> and Brad Pitt's just like, can we get security over here? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I think that the part that I'm most nervous about is like arriving and just the logistics of like, we have to do the red carpet. Like where do you enter and uh -huh. like, wh what do you do? So I think we should just avoid all of that. And I will get on the back of your chair, koala style, <laughs> you lower down. So you go top speed and we can just fly in. <laughs> fly right through the red carpet. Yeah, and if do Brad not pause. Gets hit, then he gets hit. Don't pause for a photo. No. Top speed. And I'll have my head kind of like maybe in your backpack so that you can't see me. And I don't I don't feel afraid. <laughs> we are going to this award show as guests. We are not like up for any award or anything like yeah. that. But to every person <laughs> that I interact with, I'm going to tell them that I'm just really nervous because I've never gotten an award like this before. <laughs> because someone... Is going to know that we're not getting an oh, award. No. And they're going to have to be like, oh, oh Shane. <laughs> yeah, I just keep saying that you hope you win. <laughs> it's such an honor to be celebrated tonight. <laughs> Thank you. So I assume this is like a seated event with a stage. Like, yeah, I just assume yeah. that that's what it is. Yep. I wonder how many times you and I <laughs> could alternate getting up for the bathroom. <laughs> During the award part, before well, they would say, like, oh can God. you please maintain your seat? That's so funny. Because, like, I know at other award shows, like, they do not let you get up. Yeah. Like, because it's being filmed for TV. Yeah. So they'll be like, oh, hey, now we're in commercial. Now you can use the bathroom. Yeah. But <laughs> if I went up, like, during the show, <laughs> which I would never do this, guys, but no. if I did, and beeping I was like, your horn I, together. Beeping my horn and like bumping into people. And I was like, no, it's like, it's a disability thing. I need to get into that yeah. bathroom. What would they do? They would let you in, I think. You think? Yeah. 100%. They wouldn't make me like no. empty my bowels in my no. pants. No. <laughs> no, but the idea of you honking your horn when you can't get around someone's chair. I think that's the best thing I can do all night. Whoever is in my way, I'm going to beat my horn. I've never once used my horn. <laughs> It's a horrible I, like, sound. Honestly, like, I beep it when people are like, you got a horn on that thing? Yeah. But I'm going to use it the whole night <laughs> to get anyone out of my way. And the funny part is to access your horn, you have to go out of drive mode. <laughs> so it takes like three seconds. <laughs> You're going to have to go up to someone, push some buttons, switch it around, honk the horn, and then switch back to drive. <laughs> it's going to be really awkward. <laughs> you know, the other thing we can do about the actual award aspect of it is pretend that we're really upset the whole night mm -hmm. because we were here and we thought we were being honored <laughs> but it turns out we're just guests. <laughs> carry around a tissue and dab my eyes glare at anyone who like does receive an award i'll refuse to clap <laughs> yeah when everyone goes up to receive just stare at them 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Should have been me. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like best actress, and I'll be like, oh, <laughs> should have been me. <laughs> Uh, I'll just tell everyone that I haven't, I haven't had my big break yet. <laughs> yes, the whole night we're aspiring actors. I did a lot of like actors that they're awarding. Yeah. So the whole night we'll just say, "Yeah, still looking for that big break." Oh, this isn't no. really. We, this isn't hypothetical breaks, really, but we have our business cards. Ew. Is it weird to give out? Business cards at a yes. A I don't think we're gonna give them out. Yeah, does your dress have pockets? No. If anyone gives us a business card, we can give them one. But I, I will, will not fire one right back. I will not them. be soliciting, like, like trying to give them to people. Well, uh, you think we're gonna make it? Yeah. We can handle it. I hope. I hope so. I don't really know. <laughs> I don't know, but we'll see. All right, that was our episode for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Probably one of our best ones ever with me at the at the helm. At the helm, I. You know what? From now on, you take it. Mm-mm. That was my favorite. Maybe we won't diagnose whether I'm the a hole. Yeah. Every time, but no, no. But sometimes. But sometimes. Anyway, if you enjoyed today's episode, please comment, like, review, all of that, and it's a junkyard out there. Leave your snaps at the door. If we have one more spill, our CEO <laughs> Hannah is going to lose it. She can't handle oil of any kind, <laughs> even in a junkyard. Okay. It's a little mean. Bye, everyone. Bye.